let's go ahead and get started by diving into our first area of the product, built-in dashboards and reporting. As we look at visibility and reporting, we'll start with built-in role-based dashboards and then look at how you dig deeper, as well as how you, as a finance professional, create unique reporting to exactly match the needs of your business. I'll show you how you can use dimensions to filter and regroup data into meaningful information. We'll also look at how you combine financial and operational information to gain strategic insight into the business. As we start the demonstration today, I'd like to point out a few things about the interface so you can understand where I'm going and how I'm navigating through things. First of all, I'm logged into this company as myself, Bob Shago, and you can see I have all the applications or modules here that I'm going to need. I'm a super user, so I have access to all the modules and I have access to all the entities. So you'll notice from this little drop down menu here, I have a company that has four entities 10, 20, 30, and 40 for the different cities where these offices are located. I am also logged in on another tab as a different user. This is Drew Jackson, and you can see that he's an employee. He's looking at the employee dashboard, and Drew only has access to two of the entities. And you'll notice on the applications bar that he has uh, fewer applications available to him. And the only place he can really do anything are in purchasing and time and expenses. And we'll come back to this a little bit later when we get to the purchasing demo. I just wanted to point this out. Going back to my original tab here, you'll notice I'm on a dashboard. And as we start looking at this dashboard, there's a few things we can see here. One is we can see that we can create multiple dashboards. And so I have different dashboards for different roles within the company. Along each dashboard, I have what are called performance cards. And these are metrics that show up and they give us information about a current value of a group of accounts and whether those have been going up or down based on the period we choose. In this case, all these are set to prior month. You could also choose prior quarter, prior year, and you can look at these metrics on these um, larger reporting periods. You notice we have different dashboards for different roles. I've got a CMO dashboard I can look at. Here we've got the sales view for the CMO dashboard. And we can look at different things like um, not just the financial uh, grouping, like assets or revenue, but we can also look at financial plus statistical groupings. So a calculation of something like revenue per bed in this case. And we can see that value. As we look at any of these financial listings, we can drill down into those. And so notice here, if I click on this value, I can drill down and I can see information inside the expenses area. And I see this report. I can further drill down and look at transactions um, behind these. So I can go and I can see that there was a general ledger report that contained all this information. And I can see that there was a journal entry in the AP journal and I can see what locations those were against. And I can even drill down to that journal entry itself. And I can see the actual journal entry transaction. And if I want to, I can look at an audit trail of that journal entry and see any changes that might have been made to that. But I want you to see that all of these things have the ability to um, drill down and the same with any of the reports on the screen. So you notice that I have several reports on the screen and charts. I have uh, cash flow detail by entity um, on the administrator dashboard. You know, I was looking at a lot more uh, performance cards and I was also looking at balance sheets and income statements. And I can drill down into these and find further information if I see numbers that are out of place or or seem to be anomalies, I can drill down and find out more about those pieces of information. I can also go into something like a uh, role specific dashboard, like a physician's dashboard. In this case, we come up with information that's specific to the physician. Notice that I have several charts that might be of interest in this role. I can also do mashups, um, which is I can look at an external website within a component on my dashboard. In this case, I've got a reference to the Merck manual and I can go ahead and you know click through to that right here from the dashboard. 
I'm also looking at things across the organization. So notice here I'm at the top level. I'm looking at revenue per bed by location. And if we go back to that CMO uh, sales view, notice that I was looking at cash flow broken out by location. I can expand this to give me the full report. And I can look at more information about each of these. I could drill down into net income and I can see the breakout of all the pieces of information around net income or any of these I can expand these different columns or different rows. You can also filter this. So let's say I don't want to look across all of these. I can bring up filters and I can choose location. And so in this case, I'm just going to choose New York. Click OK. Now I've broken this down to just New York and I noticed that within New York I have two locations. And so those are broken down and it shows me that information. Also on our dashboard, we've got this same revenue per bed by location. And so I can see the revenue broken out by location. I can see the balance sheet broken out location. I can also see um, different kinds of charts, in this case a donut chart. And it really gives me a clear picture of which locations are really driving the net income for the organization. As I drill down, I can see that I have another item here. This is a, a chat system that's built into the, it's called Collaborate. It's a chat system built into the system and it allows me to post comments here. I can also post through my own um, Intact Collaborate feed. I can go directly to that and see all the information. And as we'll see as we go forward, I can put notes on different documents within the system and they're permanently stored with the documents. In addition to dashboards that we have where we can look at different types of things in a dashboard, we also have the ability to look at reports. So I expanded this report here that was put on the dashboard. I can also go in and I can look at um, dozens of pre-built reports in my um, report center. So right now I'm looking at all my financial reports. I can sort this view to look at all applications or I can look at them just for certain applications, maybe accounts payable. I can look at uh, you know, an AP ledger, recurring report, uh, my 1099 reports, whatever I need to see within that application. So this way I can filter and get right to what I want. I can also create what we call favorites. Um, and so I can shorten my menu up. Let's say I look at the balance sheet and I look at balance sheet per set of ownership. When I go over to favorites, I can see that I've got the balance sheet and the balance sheet percent of ownership there on my favorite reports. And so I can create a smaller set of reports here that I use on a regular basis. I can immediately go back to all reports where I can sort by this view. So if I look across all reports across all applications and scroll through that, you can see we have um, actually over 150 standard reports that are built into the system. I can also have these reports run on a schedule. So I'm gonna go back to just my financial reports here, shorten my list up a little bit. And I have actions I can set against these reports. And so I can say process and store, meaning I'm gonna store the version of this report right now as it is. So I'm gonna run it for today and store that report. I can view an audit trail, who's changed this report, what's changed about it. I can also schedule this report. And that's really important because I can, take that schedule and I can set this report to run say month end and I can also have it delivered. I can create a list of emails that this report gets delivered to in PDF format or in Excel format, however I want to run that. And we'll go ahead and send that out. And so I can create this reporting package and send that out on a regular schedule. The other thing I can do is I can take any of these reports and I can edit them. Um, you know, I mentioned the exporting. We can we generally look at them in HTML within the system. It keeps the drill down available for us, but we can also have a PDF, uh, CSV, or an Excel file exported. Um, so we can look at this in these different formats for delivery. When I click Edit, it takes me to find my financial report writer. Now, let's say I like the balance sheet, but I want to change some things about the balance sheet report but I wanna save this balance sheet report. What I can do is I can go ahead and duplicate the balance sheet report. And just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and call it my balance sheet 
And I think I already created that one somewhere. I'm just going to call it my balance sheet too, just to make sure I don't overwrite something. And now when I come back in here, I can see um, my balance sheet too. I'm going to go ahead and open that. I don't need to sort it. I'm going to say, okay, that's how I would view the report. There's a few things I want to change about. So I'm going to go to my balance sheet too. I'm going to click edit. I'm going to go to columns. And now here in columns, I can go ahead and change a few things. I could have changed a few things in rows. These are the actual accounts I'm looking at and the account groups I'm looking at. And in columns, I can edit these individual columns of the report. In this one, I'm looking at current month. And I want to go ahead and um, it says do not expand right now. I want to go ahead and expand this by locations. So I'm going to tell this to expand by locations. And it says show one level down with roll up. Okay, so just one level down, save that. And now when I save this report, we looked at what the report looked like a minute ago. Let's just go ahead to preview this report in the HTML version. Now you'll see that I didn't create multiple columns. All I did was expand the column by locations, by a dimension. So this is an example of expanding a report by any dimension. I could have expanded it by another dimension. Perhaps I have a report by customers. Um, if you don't have a lot of customers, that might be a great report. If you have a lot of customers, that could be pretty extensive. Uh, maybe you have different product lines and you want to extend by the, by the items in your products line. Or maybe you've used item as something else. As we'll see later, we can reassign dimensions. So this is the idea of dimensions. Um, entities are dimensions. Um, items or dimensions, customers, vendors, um, employees, and you can even define your own dimensions as we'll look at. And so we would do, we can duplicate a report and then we, we go through this sort of online style cookbook. I like to think of it. And we go through and we can change the rows. We can select account groups to be added to this structure and we can create computations, meaning that we can create a column that contains a computation where we take and we run calculations against these different assets. So we create a column that is just a computation column. Maybe it's a, um, a total, maybe there's some kind of breakout going, going on like a, you know, revenue per beds or we run the balance sheet per customer. And then we can filter this. And this is an area that gets used a lot. We can create filters that get prompted at the time the report is run just by clicking prompt, or we can go ahead and set a filter. So we could go ahead and set this filter to run you know, all the time for a specific department, and then we can select that department. And this will be saved with this report, and we can undo the prompt, and this will be statically uh, filtered with the report all the time. And so there's a lot we can do with filtering, and I can set multiple filters. You know, I could set it by a department and a location. And then we have formatting that we can do, so we can change the look of the report. Maybe you have a particular look for your reporting to the board or, or to a group of stakeholders in the company and you want to make this look like your brand, like your company. And then permissions. So this is really important. I can set permissions around this report so that not everyone has access to every report. Some reports may contain very sensitive information and I don't want this to be able to show up in anybody's dashboard or anybody to be able to look at this report. I can go ahead and set report owners and I can set myself as a report owner for this. So now I have control of it. it. Always comes up that I have ownership for making changes to it. Let's first add a user. I'm going to add myself to this report so I can see it. And maybe I want to remove this user group. And I've moved at group everyone has to either be available or excluded. So I'm excluding everyone. I'm allowing myself to see this report. You know, and then I could add more more people to this report as needed. And so I could have a limited access to this report. So we create permissions about what people can see within the system. And a little bit later, we'll get into permissions within the infrastructure about getting to the different um, transactions, getting to different modules within the system. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the report writer now. And that's just a little bit about our standard reports. We also have custom reports you see listed here. And with custom reports, you can go ahead and create a report. It walks you through a wizard. So you've got multiple steps walking through a wizard to create 
a configurable report without programming. So this isn't like some systems where you need some expert to come in and program your report to be able to look at different groups. But what we do is we create it. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and show you. We can create a report. Like for instance, let's go ahead and edit this cost center expense report. So I'm looking at the purchase order transaction detail. I've selected that and I've chosen from the list of different types of transactions I have under purchasing the vendor invoice. And I'm looking at the vendor invoice detail specifically. So I'll just click next. And so what it's doing, it's looking at the line items from my purchase orders. And so I can select different um, fields from that, which will create columns in my report, different fields from the transaction. And I can go to related items. So the, the header for this purchase order, um, I can go ahead and select the due date and the date and the document ID and the total and the total paid. And from here, I can drill down even further and I can look at more and more information. I could look at the vendor. And then from the vendor, I could actually bring in information about the pay to contact if I needed to. And so I can select these different fields to become columns in my report. So I have this extended report that I get to create just by configuring. So you don't have to go out and get a programmer to create scripts to create these reports. And I move through this, this series of things like um, adding calculated columns, setting the column sequence, um, setting totals, setting column um, sort order, filters, um, grouping data, um, setting the order of the groups until we get down to save and add. So I go through all these steps, but it's all configurable wizard menus like this. And so you can create any number of these reports and then I can go ahead and assign them to different modules by adding it to a menu. So in this case, I'm going to add this to my purchase orders menu. That means when I'm in purchasing, it'll show up under my reports here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So my cost center expense report isn't just under custom reports. Now when I'm working in the purchasing module, there we go. Under report, custom reports, I have the cost center expense menu. Sometimes when you first create something, you might need to refresh the menu system. I'm going to go back to my dashboards here. And this is really a starting point within the company and within visibility. And so the whole point here is that I have visibility into my organization and have the ability to look at my organization from different roles and the ability to really get to the information immediately that I need. And I can bring this up in a board meeting. I can bring this up in strategic planning meetings and get right to the information I need, drilling down into the transactions themselves to really see what's relevant. I have a question that's come in. The question is, can budgets be formula driven? So I didn't really talk about budgets here a lot, but um, I could have compared, created a cash detail against budget or you know, balance sheet against budget or expenses against budget um, in here. And budgets can be formula driven in that they can be created in Excel and imported in. So you can, you can use Excel to, to generate your budgets and then bring them in. They can also be um, exported out to do what we call what if analysis. And a lot of intact partners have automated solutions for that type of budgeting. Another way they may be formula driven is that if you simply want your budgets to roll forward, say 3% um, from one period to another, you can set that and have it um, run across all your budget items. But if you want something more complex than that, there's partner solutions that do that. Another question, can a P&L budget be updated each month with a new forecast for the remainder of the year? That would have to be done through one of our partners. And I, when I get into the later part of this demonstration where we're gonna talk about integration, you'll see that we have a lot of partners that um, have already created solutions for this. You can manually update in intact but to be automated, you need to look to a partner for that. And with that, I'm going to end the visibility portion and move back to our presentation.